In this patho video, we discussed narcolepsy and its causes, pathophysiology, diagnosis, and treatment. Neurons in the hypothalamus release hypocretin, also called orexin, onto many areas of the brain and brainstem to help sustain wakefulness and alertness. There are 50 to 80,000 hypocretin releasing neurons in the human brain. Narcoleptics have typically lost 90% of these, causing sleep state instability, where thresholds between sleep and wake are easily crossed. Hypercretin also suppresses REM, so lack of hypercretins allows paralysis to more likely occur, as seen with cataplexy. Hypercretins have also been shown to influence feeding, addiction, and other behaviors. Causes for loss of hypercretin producing neurons vary and are not always known. Some people have a genetic predisposition. The allele variation HLA DQB10602 has a strong correlation and is found in about 90% of those diagnosed. Narcolepsy is also correlated with certain infections. There were many new cases reported after the H1N1 flu epidemic of 2009. Other contributors include certain pesticides, head injuries, tumors, strokes, and diet. Many cases are autoimmune. Genetics and the environment trigger the immune system to begin attacking hypocretin producing neurons in the lateral hypothalamus. The result is less hypocretin and symptoms. If you suffer from excessive daytime sleepiness, the Epworth Sleepiness Scale is helpful to take as a first assessment. Diagnosis by a sleep medicine physician is based on symptoms and results from sleep studies, polysomnography, and multiple sleep latency testing. Hypocretin levels can also be measured in the CSF. Polysomnography monitors brain waves, blood oxygen levels, breathing, heart rate, and eye and leg movements. It is used to help diagnose narcolepsy, sleep apnea, and REM sleep behavior disorder. Polysomnography may also be performed for unusual behaviors during sleep and for a condition called periodic limb movement disorder and for unexplained chronic insomnia where an individual has trouble staying or falling asleep. Multiple sleep latency testing, also known as daytime nap study, determines how readily you fall asleep during the day. The test takes a full day and includes five scheduled naps separated by two hour breaks. During each nap trial, the test measures how long it takes to fall asleep. The Epworth Sleepiness Scale is a subjective self-assessment for determining a patient's sleepiness. The patient considers eight situations and rates their tendency to become sleepy on a scale from zero, which is no chance of falling asleep, to three, which is a high chance of falling asleep. Go ahead now and take an opportunity to assess yourself. Afterwards, the number are added up and scored on a scale of 0 to 24. The results may be interpreted as follows. What was your score? Treatment involves practicing good sleep hygiene which includes going to bed and getting up at the same time each day, also making sure your sleep environment is dark and quiet and the temperature is comfortable. Establish a consistent pre-bedtime routine and don't eat, exercise, or use electronics too close to bedtime. Regularly planned daytime naps can help too. The main medications for narcolepsy are stimulant medications like methylphenidate and amphetamine, which promote wakefulness during the day. Modafinil and armodafinil also promote wakefulness by increasing excitatory neurotransmitters like dopamine, norepinephrine, and histamine. Sodium oxabate promotes sleep and reduces cataplexic episodes during the day. Future treatments include gene therapy, which attempts to coax other brain cells to produce hypercretin, and stem cell techniques, which would reintroduce new hypercretin-producing cells. Both techniques 
would help restore hypercretins in the brain. In summary, narcolepsy type 1 is with cataplexy and narcolepsy type 2 is without cataplexy. Certain genes, susceptible age, and an infection may trigger immune cells to attack the hypercretin-producing neurons in the hypothalamus. Loss of these neurons lead to the symptoms of narcolepsy and include hypersomnia, fragmented sleep, cataplexy, hallucinations, and sleep paralysis. The Epworth Sleepiness Scale and sleep studies are important in diagnosis. Treatment involves practicing good sleep hygiene and medications that promote wakefulness during the day and sleep at night. Now for questions. Pause the video and think of your answers. If you answered the following, you are correct. Thanks for watching.